Hey guys, it's Tini Kapatoa, and today I'd like to talk about some of the best professional advice I've received throughout my career. Now, I've always talked about worst professional advice or worst teachings and preachings that I've heard, but I think it's also good to share some of the best professional advice I've received that is not only good for just career stuff, but also life stuff that you can apply anywhere else. Because honestly, we hear a lot of crappy stories or horror stories regarding the industry and the professional life in art and animation and entertainment. And remember, some of these, there's a lot of bias behind it. But there's a lot of good gems in there too, that being in the professional industry is worth learning from. So in this mini series, maybe I'll share two or three best professional advice that I've received throughout my career. Okay, the first one I think is pretty crucial and can be applied to many different things, whether it's for career opportunities or for your personal goals, and that is to be more vocal. And I'm sure there'll be people saying, oh, I'm an introvert, that's not really my thing. But no, even as an introvert, you have to be able to state what you need, what you want, and what you can contribute. And as a fellow introvert myself, don't make that excuse. So let's come up with examples. Let's say you've been at this job for quite a while and you wanna grow career-wise, whatever. You wanna be a director, you wanna be a supervisor, or you just wanna move up in your career. One mistake that many people make is that if you spend a long time in one place, you're bound to get promoted no matter what. And things don't just get handed to you just because you were there or so-and-so. So let's say you wanted to be a director or supervisor in your team. Let your boss know, let the management know, let them know that you're interested in being a prospective director or lead for a production and what you could contribute to the table. So at least it's in the back of their mind that you're interested. I mean, don't expect it to get handed to you automatically, but at least you were vocal about it. The same thing goes with dealing with dire situations or negotiating a new contract. You have to be able to speak up for yourself. So one of the reasons why I was given opportunities to do other things besides storyboarding, so let's say animation and a bit of character design was because I was vocal about it. So for Kipo, they didn't really consider anything animation related to be explored early on. So I personally had to reach out to Rad, talk about some animation ideas and show him a simple test that I did. And that's how I was able to do animation tests for that. And it's the same thing that happened with the productions that I've been at with Netflix. Every new production that I've joined, I let them know that I have animation skills because I primarily work as a storyboard artist, but because I let them know, hey, I can animate, I can character design. If there's any opportunities for me to utilize those skills, please let me know. And that's why I'm able to do animation tests for different productions at Netflix. And guess what? Some of those things did help out character design. Sure, some people might know my background. Maybe they know my personal work because I animate a lot on my free time. Actually, I was given an assignment because the producer saw my City of Secrets trailer. So I got to do something else besides storyboarding. So here's an idea that I did that you could try using. I actually requested monthly check-ins with artist management or my production just so that I can keep that ball rolling to keep that conversation going. Just so that you can talk to them, sort of reflect how you're doing, what needs to be worked on, if there's any critique that can be given to you or what you want to do later down the line. So if you feel like you're constantly put in a box or you're only seen as one thing, you have to be more vocal about it and you have to show them that you can do these things. Take initiative initiative on that matter. Don't expect things to be handed to you and then suddenly you're blaming the industry for not giving you the opportunity that you wanted. Being vocal does not mean you go up to them, you complain, and you cry about why you deserve something. Remember, in a professional environment, you need to word things in a way that is respectful. Also mention why it's beneficial for them, not just you. Does being vocal mean that they're always going to abide to your wishes and they're always going to follow through? No, not exactly. But at least you put yourself out there, you let them know what your goals are, you stood up for yourself and that's what matters. By the way, this isn't about being an extrovert or, or constantly talking loud, speaking up. It's more about being able to voice your concerns, your wants, your needs, your goals, the normal kind of stuff that you need every day. Want to know one of the best ways to get promoted as a director or a lead supervisor role is to make everyone else's jobs easier. Your coworkers, the people later down the line, or people in the same production. You want to find ways to lessen the burden for everyone. And like my last point, this can be applied to many different things, but I'm going to talk about from my experience working as a story artist and hand-drawn animator. The last video I uploaded on YouTube was finding ways to work smarter or how I work smarter. And the summary of that video was me talking about finding ways to, to do more with less work, to make it efficient, to know my priorities, and so that the process is more streamlined. 
But in that video, I also talked about thinking about other people too who might be involved in the same workflow or production. How do you make it reusable for them? How do you make it easier for your fellow coworkers? So when we had to storyboard in Photoshop and we had to turn in fully toned boards with lighting and solid mats and all that, I made an action set that everyone in my production can use. And eventually I shared it with other storyboard artists within the studio who also need to board in Photoshop. And eventually I released the action set on my online store. When I worked on Tonko House's Pig the Dam Keeper poems, we had to tie down 50 minutes of animation within weeks. And it was a stressful time for all of us, so I had to personally reach out to TV Paint, learn more about its tools, and then make a set of stamps so that my fellow co-workers could use it when tying down the characters to match more to model. In the last production I was in, all of our storyboards we had to utilize Blender Files 3D model scenes for our backgrounds because we already built the sets. But again, we didn't have to draw the backgrounds, we could just focus on the character acting, spend more time on making the boards feel more finished, and not having to draw and stage the backgrounds from hand. Okay, so maybe it's not about creating new brushes, tools, or whatever. Find a way to make the process smoother for everyone. So maybe you're working on something or you're directing something. One thing I would avoid is indecisiveness and constant redos. One thing that a lot of my coworkers hate doing is having to address constant redos because a director couldn't make up their mind on something. When I was directing my short films, my composer and sound designer were frustrated with me because I kept changing the timing of my film, I kept redoing shots, and Therefore, it affected the effectiveness of their work later down the line. So if you're trying to find ways to make it easier for everyone, there's two components I can think of immediately right off the bat right now, which is to find ways to work smarter and efficiently, and the other one is to just stick with your decisions, so people later down the line could just move forward. But another one that I want to talk about is also reaching out to other departments and your coworkers, asking questions about what's working super well in their workflow, what's not working super well in their workflow, and what could be done to solve the current problems. Remember, if you're working in the industry or you're part of a team in a production, it's all about collaboration. Speaking of accomplishing tasks to find solutions, the last one that I do want to talk about for today is to just constantly bring up ideas. In most of the animation productions that I've been in, and this is more common in feature animation, is that the story team usually has a meeting or a conference where they try to come up with story solutions for the film. So we talk about gags, we come up with solutions for each character's arcs, we talk about visual ideas for each character. And one thing I learned is that it's not about making your ideas shine and make it seem better than everyone else's, but it's also to find a clear direction of what this production is. I've had tons of ideas rejected during meetings, but that's also because I didn't have a clear picture of what this production was about, and knowing what they didn't want gave me a better focus in what to focus on. So even if your ideas and solutions aren't the best, don't treat it as failure. The important thing is you contributed some ideas. One production that I worked on was about this character being super paranoid about everything, that everything was out to kill him, was out to get him. So when I boarded it, I made the whole scene feel very scary for him. Everyday normal things felt like demons trying to kill him. But when I pitched that to my producers and director, they thought it was too scary and definitely in the wrong direction. So I had to reboard it and make it more comedic. So even if my idea was rejected, at least I know the direction that they're going for. At least I know what to focus on now. So ask questions, explore these ideas, ask questions about these ideas. And the more ideas you give, the more scope you give your directors or your supervising lead, at least they have something to reference to move forward with their future decisions. And you know what? What if your ideas are picked and it's shown in the final product? That was your idea. And that's all folks. If you guys want me to share any other professional advice that I really hold dearly, I can talk about that relating to pitching a project, career opportunities, things like that. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, that's all, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.